Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited Mr. David Hamm, the CEO of ScanaChain. Welcome. Thank you. So to our viewers, could you give a brief introduction about yourself? Uh, about myself? Okay. So um, I've been uh, involved in blockchain for quite a little while. Um, so obviously I joined ScanaChain in April of this year. Uh, previous to that, uh, I was at Samsung SDS. Um, Samsung SDS, uh, my role there was, uh, I was head of uh, global blockchain business development for the blockchain program there. Um, you know, uh, evangelizing and um, positioning Samsung's blockchain uh, service and solutions around the world. Now, um, in terms of blockchain, I mentioned that I've, I've been kind of involved since 2010. Um, that's when I first kind of, um, you could say, came in touch or learned about blockchain. Um, uh, I learned about Bitcoin for the first time in 2010 um, so through some mutual friends. Um, they were mining Bitcoin um, in the back of a store uh, with <laughs> racks of, of, of servers. And uh, I asked them, what are you doing? And they said, we're mining. And I said, um, you know, the, my traditional understanding of mining is you're digging rocks and, and stuff. <laughs> this is kind of weird. And they told me, well, these computers are cracking codes and algorithms, and the reward for doing that is Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very interesting. I wasn't sure what it was, but you know, right away, uh, very compelling. Um, and I think what's interesting and what people find kind of cool is at that time, Bitcoin was a dollar. Yeah. Now it's like seven thousand times higher. <laughs> yeah. So it's come a long way, right? So. So yeah, so yeah, so I've been kind of in and out of the blockchain and, 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 and this world since 2010 um, and, and, and leads to now. So I'm curious to ask, it must have took a lot of courage to move out of Samsung because it's the company where everybody wants to go. Yeah. So what caught you, I mean, what moved you? Yeah. And was it rewarding? Yeah, um, so, you know, what an opportunity, right, to, to, to lead blockchain at a company like Samsung, right? So. Um, it was a very hard decision uh, to make that move from a very solid, um, you know, world-renowned organization mm -hmm. uh, into the startup world, right? Indeed. But um, so what drove me to make that change was, you know, it was, it was, it was a great opportunity. It was very exciting to be able to uh, do that within Samsung. But, you know, if you look at blockchain now, blockchain is a, is a, a decentralized technology. And I felt, this is my opinion, that um, uh, it, it was kind of difficult to do a decentralized technology in, in, a, in a centralized organization. Um, not that it's, it, it, it's not going to happen, mm -hmm. it's just I felt that it might take a little bit longer, right? And as well, another from a personal perspective, um, you know, right now we're at the start of this industry, right? You know, sure, blockchain has been around since 2010 or since, since way back when, um, but this, we're kind of at the forefront of, of the industry boom right now. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's getting into cryptocurrency, people are starting to understand blockchain, um, and this is where you see a lot of innovative solutions, technologies, and, and projects, right? So I wanted to move as quick as the industry was moving, mm -hmm. and I felt that the, the best way for me to do that was to come out of, uh, you could say, kind of that corporate world and, and enter into the startup world, right? Um, the big focus at, at, at Samsung was enterprise. Um, my opinion is that um, blockchain, in order for it to be impactful um, and in order for it to really uh, benefit people in everyday lives, um, you have to target the mainstream. Mm -hmm. You have to target end users and consumers, right? Similar to like how uh, email kind of changed the world or how internet changed the world, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about email, uh, why email became uh, such a big and uh, meaningful solution was that everyone used it mm -hmm. and everyone is using it, yes. right? And I feel that blockchain um, should be like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when, when, when I found myself focusing on just enterprise play, mm -hmm. I felt that I needed to jump out. And that was one of the big reasons uh, why I made the move. Like Samsung's got a great blockchain program. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing against that. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, what we're doing at ScanaChain is pretty exciting. And um, was it fruitful? Um, you know, we're, we're going through that journey right now. 
Um, and uh, you know, we're 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 on our way, right? Uh, we're having fun at doing it, and it's uh, exciting and it's challenging at the same time. Um, so yeah, I believe it's been definitely fruitful from that perspective. So let's move away from Samsung and get okay. into the topic of today's interview, scan a chain. Yeah. If you could summarize your application into two or three sentences, okay. how would you do it? So, um, you know, we, we, we have some visionary uh, kind of taglines, right? Uh, <laughs> one is, you know, we're, we'd like to change the ways of the world. How, how are we going to do that? Um, uh, one of the things that we say is don't search it, scan it. So when I, when I say don't search it, scan it, what we mean by that is we're using AR, and we're using blockchain. So instead of uh, people uh, searching for things mm -hmm. on Google or Naver, um, instead, we, what we're positioning, what we're building is a solution where people could use their mobile device and just scan their camera, and the content and information that they want will come to them. Now, blockchain, what does blockchain provide? Blockchain provides that trust, security for that content, mm -hmm. also enables a token economy uh, to incentivize users. Um, who are viewing that content for content producers. It also provides them with the ability to, you could say, monetize through tokenization uh, their content. Mm -hmm. right? And as well, um, anyone who has uh, the, the token uh, within that uh, token economy has the ability to vote, um, uh, creating kind of a, you could say, a democratic uh, network. Right? So the product is currently live, right? So we have a demo application mm -hmm. that um, I, I can show you guys a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, this month, uh, we are announcing um, the commercial launch of our AR-only platform. Mm -hmm. And with that AR platform, um, we're, we will be able to, uh, you could say, uh, start delivering on our business use cases that we mentioned in some of our presentations and, mm -hmm. and in our white paper and whatnot. Um, the blockchain component will come closer to the end of the year, maybe uh, Q1 next year. Uh, but uh, we will have an application that is live uh, for people to download. They can they can use, um, and they will be able to see the benefits of it uh, starting this month. So you have a demo prototype. So do you mind showing it to our viewers? Sure, absolutely. Uh, instead of explaining, um, what I do is I like to show people our demo app. Right. So the demo it's it's a demo right now with predetermined um, kind of with uh, predetermined actions. But um, my business card. Um, the back of my business card is, is uh, set up as what we call an AR marker, and it's part of our solution. So when you scan my business card, you actually see our company lifestyle video. Scan it immediately. It's pretty cool, right? Place of origin, height, age, and character. I mean, we won't go through the whole video, but but you know what what we envision is that. Anything can be a marker. It could be a logo, it could be a product, it could be a picture, it could be a face, it could be image, right? So when, when the, the value to end users is when they're using their phone, you know, um, and they turn on the camera, which is a, a very natural behavior already, mm -hmm. instead of searching for something on Google or Naver, they could just scan and they could find relevant information based on, um, you know, content uh, that, uh, you know, that they're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. So um, right now it's predetermined to show our video, but later on when someone scans something, like, let's just say it's a company logo, they, they will have the ability to see, let's say, the company website, mm -hmm. company video, um, maybe a story about the company, or if it's a brand, maybe a map with locations of the stores. If it's a product, it could take them directly into the purchase page. So it's, it's very compelling from that perspective where instead of spending that time to type, you could just scan. So one of the information that caught my eye was that scan -a chain was first AR DAP based on NEM. Yeah. So our viewers might not be familiar with the concept of AR and as well as NEM. So could you explain, uh, expand on the concept of AR and why, decide, why you guys decided to use okay. NEM? Well, um, AR uh, is augmented reality, right? So um, uh, if, if we explain augmented reality, it's, it's um, what people call an adjustment of the real world that we see, right? Mm -hmm. Through camera, through technology, right? So a lot of AR that we see today is where you take your camera and you search or scan things and you see image overlay on top. 
And I think um, a, a lot of AR right now has been utilized in games or emoticons and things like that. So a, a popular AR game is Pokemon Go, which everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason I mentioned that is because everyone's played it, right? <laughs> Indeed, yes. But the difference between what we're doing is instead of providing a gamification, um, we're utilizing that AR technology um, to give people the ability to see content on top of the real world, right? Mm -hmm. Now, NEM is obviously a, a blockchain uh, protocol uh, that's, um, you know, you could say it's in one of the top 10. And the reason why we decided to use NEM was NEM utilizes, um, you could say, standard programming languages, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just mentioned, um, you know, uh, first commercialized uh, DApp um, using AR and blockchain. So, uh, a lot of blockchain projects today, um, they are actually not in commercial availability yet, right? They're not uh, ready uh, for people to use. They're still in development. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because, you know, one of the big challenges in our industry is finding um, talented developers, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's, it's, it's basically like finding gold, right? <laughs> So NEM uses standard programming languages that um, we could tap into existing, you could say, talent pool, mm -hmm. people who have already um, been developing applications or programs and software, coders and, and whatnot, and they could just learn how to do blockchain. So NEM utilizes standard languages like Java, which mm -hmm. is easy, right? So for us, um, uh, the fact that uh, we could commercialize and develop quicker, we could deliver a product to consumers and users a lot faster. So that was one of the reasons why we decided to use NEM. As well, uh, NEM has a function within um, uh, the blockchain that, that is beneficial to our service. So I mentioned that um, protection of content, um, NEM has a feature, uh, apostle, like uh, it's called Apostles, mm -hmm. um, and it enables you to notarize content. Mm -hmm. And notarizing content is kind of like registering, and it's kind of like registering IP and protecting IP. Mm -hmm. So when someone uploads content, um, they could, you know, that the transaction of this person um, uploading this content has been secured on the blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. And their ownership has been sort of staked, that, yes. right? So those are some of the things um, that we felt uh, NEM uh, would enable us to provide more value to um, the people who would use it. Again, there's a lot of other benefits of, of why and reasons why we chose NEM, but you could say those are some of the, some of the key reasons for us. So you emphasize on the commercial use of your application. Yeah. However, are there any individual uses, such as bloggers, maybe bloggers can post their stuff yeah. using your application? Yeah, absolutely. So there is a social component. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, anything can be a marker, but anyone can be a content producer as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we do have, you could say, kind of a, um, an enterprise or a business kind of model uh, where we are targeting you know, advertisers and brands and, and, and shopping platforms. but. Um, you know, simple uh, users uh, like yourself or myself, if we wanted to upload content, um, we, could, we could do that on, on the Scan Chain service as well too, right? So to give you an example, if um, I wanted to uh, set up my daughter's picture mm -hmm. as a marker, I could upload her image um, as a marker, notarize it and protect it as my content, mm -hmm. right? And um, what I could do is I could associate uh, different types of content to that. So what, so what I mean by it is, now let's say I tell my mom, hey, here's a picture of my daughter, why don't you scan it? So usually you see just the picture, but when uh, we enable it through our service, now when my mother scans the picture of my daughter, she'll see perhaps a video of my daughter's like first day in ballet, mm -hmm. um, you know, her first day of skiing, um, maybe other picture galleries of you know, artwork that my daughter created. So we're bringing the, you could say, uh, like offline and online, converging them together, mm -hmm. um, enabling uh, a greater set of content to be visible uh, through, uh, you know, uh, rather than you know, just seeing one picture, right? So end users, absolutely, right? And then you can share it. Um, and because we enable token economy, if um, you share your content and people view your content, whatnot, People could be incentivized and rewarded. Um, you could even sell your content within that token economy, right? So the users can also benefit, I mean, earn maybe a value. Absolutely. By posting 
uh, content. Absolutely, right? So content producers have the ability um, to one, incentivize others, but they also have the ability to, you could say, um, perhaps sell their content as mm -hmm. well if it's something that's relevant to others, right? You know, uh, just think if uh, I'm an independent artist or something, right, and I have really cool artwork, I could upload that, and if people um, are interested, they could purchase or they could incentivize me mm -hmm. as well to post more, or I could incentivize others to view more content. I mean, once the product gets released to the public, I'll be very sure to download your application as well. Awesome. Thank you for your time, Mr. Ham. Do you have any last comments to our viewers? Um, so, uh, it, from, from a comment perspective, um, you know, what I'd like to let people know is that, you know, blockchain is here. Um, blockchain has um, been touted as the technology that's going to, you know, change people's lives. Uh, we're at the start of that right now, and I think that uh, there's something for you to really um, anticipate and be excited about because there's a lot of really cool blockchain projects out there. Um, and uh, I hope to position Scanit Chain as one of those exciting projects that you guys would follow. Thank you. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for your yeah. time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. David Ham, the CEO and founder of Scanit Chain. Thank you. <laughs>